Hi, welcome back to Therapy Designs. My name is Kelly and I'm here to help you improve your design skills for your print on demand business so that you can make more sales and generate more income. If that is something that you're interested in, please hit like and subscribe and comment below your main reason for starting your print on demand journey. So in today's video, I'm going to go over how you can create this design right here. It is actually a lot faster and easier than you think. The hardest part is getting that splatter frame. So if you already watched last um, the last video on Tuesday and you already have a splatter frame, then this is going to be super fast and easy for you. If not, you have to put a little bit of time into making the original splatter frame. But from that point forward, it's pretty quick and easy to create this design. I'm going to go over how you can do the photo layers and how you can use the photo effects to, to get the different layered look. Um, so if this is something that you would like to learn to do, go ahead and stick around. So here we are on Canvas homepage. I am going to be kind of uh, going further with the design that we made uh, last, uh, last time. So if you didn't watch the video on Tuesday, um, you can go back and rewatch that. But I'll try to kind of you know, uh, recap what you need to know for this one. So it was a splatter frame that we are going to do with a photo mask on top of it. The splatter frame is the thing that takes the longest. So once you've got that, the rest of it becomes pretty easy. Now, normally I would go ahead and go up to the top here where it says custom size, and I would go ahead and select 4,500 by 5,400 pixels and pull up a blank design. I don't need to do that today because I've already created my splatter mask. So I'm just going to go to my recent designs and I'm going to open up what I made last time, which is my splatter frame. So here's my splatter frame. And then here is the design that we created on the last video, the eat, sleep, baseball repeats. Um, splatter frame, just for any of you who did not watch the video last time, I'm going to go ahead and just duplicate this here so that I've got one I can play with. So I'm not going to touch the original, but so that you can see for this one, this is all grouped together. Let me ungroup it. All we've got here is a big rectangle that I put in the frame, a big white rectangle. And the way I did that was hit R on the keyboard and just, I pulled up a rectangle to fill a big chunk of the frame. And then all I did was go around that rectangle then with little splatters. So these are all individual little splatter pieces that I used to create sort of this splatter version. And so that's what takes the longest is just going around and finding all the little pieces and putting different splatter pieces around the edge. And a lot of these are the same splatters that I reused that I just kind of angled them differently or whatnot to sort of get this irregular sort of splatter looking border. And all you have to do when you go to search is go up to your elements and you can go ahead and just search for splatter and you'll get all sorts of splatter graphics. And I like to use the circles because they are you know, great for this. I can just go ahead and angle the circles any way I want to get different edges. So for example, there is, I think it's this one right here, and I can just take that and angle it any direction I want to get a different edge. And so I can overlap them and create a cool sort of splatter edge. And so that's how I got my frame. Um, and if you need any more help with that, again, go watch the, the video right before this one. And it goes over, you know, step by step how I did it. But that's essentially it. And then what we did is we went ahead and downloaded the splatter frame. So I went here. We went to share, download. It's got to be a transparent background. It's a PNG. And you are just going to go ahead, select um, the frame. So there's my splatter frame and done and i would hit download and that will download my splatter frame okay so from here what we're going to do is we're going to pick a new mask so let me get rid of this in the last video we picked a baseball mask to put on um in this video we're going to do something a little different i'm going to go with uh an animal i'm going to do something that's sort of a unique style we're going with a unique design um something that's um says dare to be yourself or be different and so the the animal i wanted to go with was a mandrill let's see if i spell this right it's a baboon looking thing right so one of these that has sort of that red and blue face it's definitely different stands out we're going to go with photos 
And there's all sorts of those cool photos of those monkeys looking silly. And so you can pick anything you want. Of course, this is what I'm going to do, but you can do any animal, any design, any style. I'm going to go easy and I'm going to go with this one right here because I think it's going to fit that frame perfectly. To make sure it fits, I'm going to go up to the top where you get that checkered background. I'm going to bring that transparency down so I can see through it. This way I can see where the monkey is going to line up in my frame. And I have to make sure that, oops, got to make sure that all of these little dots are covered so I can't put him down here and then not have the dots up here covered. So I do got to bring this up enough so I'm covering all of the dots, but then I don't want his face to get cut off. So it's a little bit of playing with the right size. So something like this is covering all of the dots and he's fitting in there pretty well. I can make it smaller still if I want to. Again, still having to cover all the dots at the top there. But that looks pretty cool. I like the way that he's fitting there. Once I have him fitting perfectly and in the right size and the right spot, I can go ahead and get rid of the transparency. And then I can just go ahead and make a mask here. So I would go ahead, just real quick, retitle this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it monkey mask. <laughs> monkey mask. Um, and then we're gonna go download. Um, it does not need to be a transparent background for this. It does need to be a PNG. I just want this first page. I'm gonna hit done. And we are gonna go ahead and download our mask here. Perfect. So once it's downloaded, I can get rid of my monkey. I'm going to go ahead and add another page here. So there's my baseball one. I'm going to add another page here. And what we're going to do is we are going to jump over to Photo P. So if you haven't seen me use Photo P before, it's great. It's fast. It's easy. It's free. You don't have to sign up or log in or anything. Here I am on the page after I had finished my baseball one. And so here's my baseball mask over my splatter background. If you've already done this, by the way, you can just go ahead and put your monkey right over the top of this. So I could go file, open in place, pull up my downloads, grab my monkey mask. It would go right over the top. So here's the monkey mask on the top and then the background still down here. I can hit layer, clipping mask, and it's ready to go. And I can do this as many times as I want. So I can have many, many fold up photos and all I have to do is file you know, open in place and I can place as many photos as I want, do the clipping mask and save it. And so you can, you know, really scale this out pretty fast and easy. But assuming you, you know, weren't at this point yet, I'm gonna go ahead and just, we'll open a new page. And so if I did a search for photop.com or just search for photop, you're gonna get this. It is literally www.photop.com. This is what it looks like. Click there, open it. It's gonna show you this page here. Again, you don't have to log in or do anything. You hit open from computer. That'll pull up your downloads. You're gonna to need to start with your splatter frame. So just go ahead and select your splatter frame first. It'll pull up your frame. So there's the frame that we made last time. And then I can go to file, open in place, find my monkey mask, hit open. It'll bring my monkey mask right on top. So the background's here, monkey mask is on top, monkey mask is highlighted. And I just go to layer, clipping mask, and boom, there's my monkey. Now I can go to file, export as, PNG. There we go. And I can put splatter monkey if I want to, whatever I want to say it, and hit save. And it's ready to go. So that is all I needed Photo P for. It really should be that fast, that easy, that cheap, that free. I said cheap, but it's free. Um, and so it's ready to go. Now all I'd have to do is go over to my uploads here and go ahead and just upload my splatter monkey. Okay, so I have my splatter monkey here. I'm going to go ahead and put it in front of the page. Now, what I want to do with this one that's going to be a little bit different than we did last time with the baseball is we are going to use some cool photo effects and I'm actually going to do a little bit of a layered feature on it too. So I'm going to make three versions of the same thing. So to do that, I'm just going to hit control D. So I've now duplicated it. And so I'm going to do that. 
and then control D again. I've duplicated it again. And again, I can center it. So now I've got three overlapping versions. <laughs> so version number one, I'm going to take and I'm going to do a background remover on. Assuming this worked right. Oops, let's see. Yep, I removed the background. So now I just have the monkey face and I can do the monkey now separate from the background. So I'm going to just put that right back on top of where he was. So he's nice and overlapped. Yep, perfect. And now I can use some photo effects. So I can go to edit and let's go ahead and select some filters. Let's do something cool with the monkey. So I want him to be very bright, maybe do a, one of the stark ones, something very vivid. So here would be like stark. Here's elder, you know, the different shades that I could do to really make him pop. Do something that kind of looks cool, different, maybe not something like that. But you can see how you can just sort of play. And what we're looking for is to just do something really cool. So, I mean, that one right there looks kind of cool. It's fun. It's a little bit brighter than the original. See, so when we do the original, we don't have as much of that blue. But when I go back down here, I did sort of like that. Was that one the polar? No, that wasn't polar. Which one was that one? That was this one. So Aria, I like that one for my main monkey. So I think he looks pretty cool there. Then I can go ahead and I can do the background a little bit different too. So I can bring that up by the way, so that I can get hopefully the next layer right under him. So if I grab the layer just below him, I can go ahead, go to edit. And again, I can do filters and I can do anything that I want here. And again, let's say I wanted to do maybe more of a bluer background. So now what you would see, oops, if I was to grab my top monkey, and bring him down, he now has this sort of purpley background behind him. And so you can see how we sort of did that. And now what we could really do to have fun with this would be whoop, move my purpley one. Oops. Move my purpley one out of the way and now grab my very back layer because I've got three layers here. Edit. Again, I can do filters and I can do any filter I want. But for this one, I'm thinking I want to do the heat wave. So I've got sort of that light blue going on. And now what we're going to do is I am going to go ahead and put these layers where I want it. So I've got my heat la wave layer there. I'm going to bring this down, right? And then all we're going to do is use my arrow keys to go up just a little bit so they're not quite layered perfectly. So I want a little bit of that sort of overlap there. And then I can take this guy down and he's going to go right on top there. Now if I change my background color to black, you should be able to see this pop a little bit better. Let's see if I can grab hold of the back. Oops so many layers here I gotta crop them all up so i can get hold of that back layer i'm going to change this background color to black and so now we can really see the monkey sort of pops on that background i'm getting just that little bit of overlap because i went ahead and did two different backgrounds so you can start to see sort of that lighter stuff coming in from the sides and so that looks pretty cool there and now what I want to do is add a little bit of text as well. So I'm going to go ahead, hit T on my keyboard, and we're going to put dare, right, to B. And then actually the bottom is going to say yourself. Dare to be yourself. And let's go ahead and make that something light right now so I can see it something small. Now you can use any font that you want. You can do this however you want. But I'm going to go ahead and use something a little bit more scripty. And after playing for a while, the font that I had come up with that I liked was one called Alamade. It was one of my first ones here. Almond, Almondade. This is one that I got from Creative Fabrica. But again, you can use any font that you want. And I mean, you don't have to use um, this. You can use, again, any, not only any font that you want, but... 
Whoop. There we go. There to be yourself. It can be any script font, any, any other kind of font, really whatever you want. I thought that that looked cool and I was going to do it something like that around the bottom dare to be yourself and that looked kind of cool and then i was going to go ahead and do an effect let's go ahead and do like maybe a black outline around it just so it pops real good and so something like that looks pretty cool there and so that's the design and you can be again as creative as you want with this um, you can also do, I wish that was a little bit thicker, I can do other fonts too. So I can look for other script fonts or anything else that might look cool. So you don't necessarily, again, have to just pick the first one you find. I can totally play with it and see if there's anything else that I like better or anything that's maybe a little bit thicker. I mean, so you can see how I can just start picking different ones and seeing if I find one that looks cool. I would want something that's maybe a little bit thicker. That one kind of looks cool. I wish it was a little bit scriptier, but it's at least a little bit thicker. And there's another one. That one kind of looks cool and it's a little bit thicker. So that might be a good choice. So any of, you know, any of these things kind of look cool and you can just play around with that. Here's a feeling passionate dare to be. I kind of like that. Again, any of those look cool, like the way that that looks. I can go ahead at this point if I want to and try to come all the way down in the corner, group all of my layers together. This way I can go ahead now and move them up in the page. I can resize it. I can make it a little bit bigger so it really fills that page nicely. And there it is. So now I'm going to go ahead, put dare to be, oops, yourself. And it is ready to go, so I can now hit share, download. Um, I'm gonna still want my transparent backgrounds. And go ahead and hit done. Current page, it's ready to go. Now, lots of different ways you can play with this. By the way, this is the same technique that you would use if you wanted, like, let's say the background to be black and white. Now, for this one, the background was kind of pretty solid anyways, but let's say it was actually a background where you could see stuff in it. I could still do the same technique I did to have the foreground in color and the background in black and white. So that's something you guys can play with too. Or you could have the foreground looking normal and the background looking all, you know, trippy. So lots of ways that you can play with changing the colors from the foreground to the background or adding a little bit of an overlap there by just kind of, you know, putting another layer behind it that has a slightly different shade. And so this was really quick and easy. I mean, we did that pretty fast. Again, the hardest part is creating the splatter frame. And once you have that splatter frame, then finding masks and, you know, creating new designs can be really quick and easy. Again, this could go on a shirt or it could go on a poster or a metal print or a sticker or anything that you like that you think might look cool. Um, again, if you have any questions, you can throw it in the comment section below. I try to get back to everybody as quickly as I can. If you have video requests, you can throw that in the comment section below. Um, I see if I can add you to my list. If there's, you know, anything you want me to know, anything that you would like to ask me, anything either about my journey or about print on demand or about design, anything that you would like to get out of this channel, go ahead, throw that in the comment section below. I read all of the comments. And by the way, thank you so much for the kind words. We are trying to grow and expand this channel and create more of a community for you guys. So I've got some exciting plans coming up in the future that I'm working on. Um, and I hope you guys are doing really great. I hope you have an awesome fourth quarter. Don't forget that when people are shopping for the holidays, they're not just buying Christmas shirts, they're buying gifts for people. And gifts for people usually are evergreens. So while you're busy designing all of your Christmas and holiday stuff, be sure you throw up a lot of evergreen style designs in there that people can gift away to other people. Um, and other than that, uh, I hope to see you guys again next week. That's it for today's video. If you found that useful and would like to see more videos with helpful tips and tricks, be sure to hit like and subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss any of the weekly videos. As always, keep growing and stay creative and we'll see you next time.